welcome back to Men's Truth. Yes, sir. We are in the building. Welcome, welcome. Man, we want to welcome everybody back to another, another great episode. And I'm telling you, man, y'all are in for something special (laughs) today. Y'all are in for something special today. One of my favorite people in the building. You know, and and I'm going to introduce him later. But first and foremost... I yes. got to ask y'all a question. How y'all doing today? Huh? Hey. Hell, I just want to know. Huh? Type it in the comments. Yes. Type it in the comments, man. How Let us doing? know how y'all win was today. I want to yeah. see those comments get lit up. You know, So, as I ask you how your win was, <laughs> I want to go to my brother. Oh, yeah. Ask, man, how oh, was yeah. your oh, win, yeah. man? I got a couple this uh, week. Come on. Yeah, I got some big clients lined up. Oh, um, man. Let's say with my brother. We made some big moves today. We did. We, did. we made some big growths on this show. What? I, I'm going to take all of them from you. But <laughs> 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 but uh, it's a lot of wins this week. Uh, mm. And like I always say, the number one win is waking up and having another day to be blessed. Man, so we back Let's in. start there. Let's man, start I there. like it. Yes, sir. I like it a whole lot, man. <laughs> you know, so... You know, it's amazing how how we always find ourselves back to that particular type of win, man, yeah. just being grateful. Yes. You know, God gives us, you know, something inside of us, mm-hmm. man, that we don't understand until we reach a certain part of our life to where, man, I just woke up. Yes. Remember when we were younger, man, we wake up like, ah, oh, man, my mama want me to wash the dishes. Do you I got go to school. But you get a different type of gratefulness when yes. you wake up, yes. man. Man, God is just good like that, man. That's so good. I go into my win. Let me talk a little bit about my win. I had a win this weekend also. Mm. I had a real good win, man. You know, me and my wife, uh, we have a a small group at our church. Yes. And it's it's pretty cool, man. And, and, you know, I enjoy how our relationship has grown and matured Mm -hmm. over time. You know, and we've got... um, uh, our, our uh, small group, and it's called Relationship Goals, man. And we copied a little bit off of what we saw, you know, those folks at Transformation do. And we've been kind of adopting some of those things, man. Yeah. And, and let me let me step back. Let me step back and retract. Our church has what we call small groups. So small groups is where you break off uh, different types of ideas that you may have and you bring some folks together, but it's all Christian-based. It's all God-based, God-centered based. Yes. And what it does... It brings people that normally wouldn't come together that may sit on this side of the church or that side of the church. It brings them together. Yes. And that's what makes it so dope because it's people that I, I didn't even know that was walking up to me at church on Sunday like, man, I see how you and your wife walk in. I want to join y'all group. And I look forward to meeting people yes. every day, man. I'm a people's person, man. That's where I draw my personal mm-hmm. energy from. I'm a people's person. So I'm excited about the small groups, man. Hey, I really am. That, that commercial was, was dope. It was. It was. <laughs> it, it, it took my idea. It was a plug. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is this to see you guys together. Yeah. They they are like, uh, you know, yin-yang all the way through. Oh, man. Goofballs Goofy. all day long. <laughs> that's my friend, man. <laughs> it is. And, and, and that's what it's supposed some, to be. And, you know, sometimes I think, uh, and that's what we had to learn, man. We, it was... We were going in so many different directions yeah. as we, we grew. And and we haven't made it to the top. I want to say that, man, we're still going through financially. We're still trying to uh, achieve goals financially. Yeah. We're, we're both the uh, parents that didn't have the proper parents growing up. Yeah. So we're still learning how to be parents and direct our kids in the right way. But yeah. God is doing something unique within us mm. as we grow. Mm. And we're friends, man. And I get to witness it. You know, it's crazy, yeah. man. Like, like I'll start dancing. She'll just bust out dancing, you know. Uh, she'll look at me like I'm crazy. I'm stop that. Get karaoke. Nah, stop. Karaoke. <laughs> in Walmart. Karaoke in the car. Yeah. Karaoke walking. Man. Uh, hey, these two right now, I just want to just hand them a mic, just come out of nowhere, <laughs> behind a tree, be like, go. Yeah, yeah. At any moment. <laughs> so that's good to see, man. man I, I, I love it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, encouraging to yeah. people out there that, that think that, that love can be different and, and come back together and, and be unique yeah. in the same way. That's the hope I see. That's what I see from my parents. That's what I see from you guys. That's, awesome. That's why, you know, I see everybody out there who yeah. think it's not possible. Hey, you need to tap into small groups like this. Yeah. If you're here in Texas, tap yeah. into small groups in our church. We have open arms for it all yes. day. Hey, man. Um, it's so many different yeah. types, man. You got fishing groups. You got relationship, of course, groups. You got yeah. breakfast groups. Yeah. You got book 
groups. You got groups that come together Youth just groups, to play yeah. games, man. Oh, it's yeah. a game night group, man. Un- man those people are not competitive, man. <laughs> hey, man, I, I, you know what? I got, I got a crazy story, man. It's, it's one of those brothers that uh, him and his wife are over uh, the game night. Yeah. And man, when I say he was talking trash, we were, we were playing the game. I was like, hold on, wait a minute. You can't beat me in this. He's <laughs> like, oh, watch me, pow. He, he's sitting there knocking the cars down. Yeah. I said, okay, it's an okay, under, it's, it's understanding it's that yeah. small groups is just not all about. You know, uh, just these these groups and, and churches and separated. Yeah. It's about coming together. Yeah. Uh, you know, Pastor Jones uh, Church uh, 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 leads it in such a way. It's yeah, almost yeah. like you have to be a family to understand each other. Yeah. He said something uh, two weeks ago that if you're not learning the person that's sitting next to you or across from you, yeah. are you really a family? Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Are you really I a like family? It. I like so it. coming together and knowing somebody from somewhere else, yeah. different country, different place, right. whatever, dealing with something totally different, that's if good. you get to know them, that's good. That's good. you know what I mean, or sit down and have a meal with them get yeah. to understand them, yeah. the whole church functions as man, a whole instead does, of divided. That's, that's good instead stuff. of divided. So that's I love that. Uh, man, and... and um, kind of give it away, I guess, though. Oh, I'm, did I say that? Shh. Yeah. Shh. Shit, we're going to ease okay. it to Okay, that. we got it, we got you it, we got it. My you bad, know, my bad. You know, it, yeah, it, sometimes it, I just you know, I, slip up. It's okay, it's, it's okay. okay. <laughs> but you know what? We got to slip up or something because I know they watching us right now. And I know y'all <laughs> see something. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh. Well, there it is. We have some I new. A, I need a lint oh, roller. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, we, we came like the white and black, you know. We're, we're like knights in shining armor. Look at this, man. Look, check us out. Check us out. <laughs> Oh my God! Hey Can, man, we what? doing a little something, man. We trying, huh? We trying. We got some merch coming soon. We trying. We got some apparel coming soon. Yes, sir. Yes, man, sir. Man, God is ahead of this thing, man. Hey, hey. We coming, y'all. We coming. I'm telling you, and we're doing it in a positive mm-hmm. way, man. And we're giving God the glory all the way through, all man. All the way through. You know, so I, I'm excited, man. I'm excited for what's yeah. more coming. You know, and don't forget to like and subscribe. If you haven't already, push that button. If you haven't shared already, push that button. Come on with it. Need that button. What you're waiting on? Join that button. Jump on the train. <laughs> we driving down. Choo choo, baby. Let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Let's, let's go. go. Man, so, hey, as we go though, let's go into the recap, man. Recap because there's some stuff, man, that's been going on that we want to talk about. Yeah. You know, in sports. As we always touch that a little bit because we, uh-huh. you know, big sports guys here. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. But the, the NFL combine, you know where that is again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but y'all don't for y'all know. For the folks that don't know, go ahead and enlighten us. Where is it? In Indianapolis, Indiana, oh, a.k.a. Man. Naptown. You know where we Naptown. host all the professionalism, you know, all the sportsism. <laughs> All the y'all don't like my town because you know it's smaller, but it's it's a lot of love. It's not Atlanta, it's not Texas, but it's beautiful inside what? and out. But let's talk about these guys that's performing. Yeah, let's you do know, it. You know these college guys now, uh, man. From the time I was in to the time now, yeah. they have become more professional, man. and they're competitive. And just seeing them go out there and not sit out and wait for their pro day, man, and they're going out there competing, and competing. I seen a, a guy six five D lineman right now coming out. I forget his name. Six five, three almost three hundred pounds, moving like I was moving. <laughs> That's scary. That's scary. That's scary. Man. Running the four five. That was scary type. And yeah. touching it and moving, not slipping, not doing anything. Wow. Scary. Uh, to my 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 Michigan young brothers, I'm proud of y'all yeah. for the hard work y'all putting in, y'all showing out, Change. y'all moving up the, yeah. the chart, and y'all deserve everything that's coming to y'all. So, my Michigan family, go support them, yeah. go show all the love as possible. Yeah. Hey, those guys is hey, nasty, man. Hey, one, one guy you didn't mention. Who? Man, that boy Milton. Oh, I forgot. My bad. Water my bad. <clears throat> Oh my God! I don't know. Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> hey man, I have never in my life once seen a person once sit still and say, "I'm flicking the ball seventy yards." Michael Vick, right? Michael Vick. Did. Michael Vick would do it on a run. It was it was it was a little momentum behind that left arm, man. <sighs> he sat still and flicked yeah, the ball seventy yards. Eighty yards. No, no, that was the first one was no, seventy. Yeah, okay, the first one was seventy. In the second, he said, "Hold on, hold on." Just getting started. Huh? 80 yards. The ball hung. You can hear people in this crowd saying, whoo. Hey, but he wasn't, he wasn't the only one. Hey, that was the most impressive one. But it man, was, those guys were slinging. But just man. watching all the other ones do it. Yeah. After that. And then just seeing that. And then the wide receivers. Uh, what's your boy that ran the 4 2? Man, uh, uh, man, don't give me the name. Uh, if you never asked, I would have told you. Well, y'all know it because y'all already seen it. But yeah. <laughs> we don't have it on hand. But he ran the 4 2. 
the fastest ever in the combine. That's crazy, man. That's that's like Usain Bolt lining up and just taking off. That's crazy, man. It is. Lightning's, lightning fast. You and know. it gets faster in the game. People don't yeah. understand that game speed is – Ten times faster. Man, what about these guys who have sons that that were greats, like Jerry Rice, Ooh. Brendan Rice? Ooh. He was in. The, he was at the combine. Yeah, he showed up. Showing up. You know, and his dad was there. Michael Irvin was there to support him. You know, you had Emmitt Smith was there. All <clears throat> of these guys that were once great that we watched as we grew up. Yeah, their kids are just as are just as good. This man. is great. This is great. You know, but I wonder if it's tied to some of that NIL money that's going on in, Ooh, in college. That's, that's maybe, a big maybe, maybe you got a little bit more money to play with to keep your body a little chiseled Yeah. versus when you were playing. Nothing. You know? Zero. Top ramen. Yeah. Top, top ramen. <laughs> top ramen, crackers. Fast food. You only, like a sausage? <laughs> maybe $1,500 a, a, a semester. Maybe. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that amazing? Fifteen hundred dollars. Food stamps, Wait. by the way. Food stamps. I, I was advocating for food stamps. Never pass it up. Never pass hey, it up. I'm telling you, hey, hey man, student loans is crazy. These guys are millionaires. Man, Shador Sanders. The Sanders are lit. Good God, man! Great dude. job what they're doing on the field and off the field. Man, Deion Sanders has the two highest paid guys right now. Yes. With NIL money. Yes. At one school. At one school. And then. Marvin Harrison Jr. Let's talk about Ooh. that. Man, they are offering this kid twenty to twenty five million dollars mm. to stay at school. To stay at not school. Not to go to the NFL. And that's more money than Come on, a, a man, list of fit, crazy. fifteen wide receivers what? in the lead in their first year. That is insane. I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I be an eight year senior? <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not going nowhere. You say what? <laughs> yeah. Man, and, and you're gonna be the dog because these kids are coming in. What are they gonna do with a six or seven year senior? I mean, what's the rush? I don't know. What's the rush, man? Uh, and when you're making one, now it's competitive enough that yeah. you're making the amount that you will make when you go to the league. What's the rush if you got another year? Man, did you see the the list? It said that, that Jalen Waddle and Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, that if he stayed in college, he'll be making more than some of the top receivers in the NFL right now. And, it, and it's, it's favorable in college that the coaches are willing to invest in you yeah. becoming better. In the NFL, it's, it's a business. Yes. If you are not performing you know, halfway through the season, we got to change it up some way, somehow. Wow. But to secure – the, the financials, knowing that you can get hurt yeah. any second, I'm all over that. Mm. I support that. Don't take it away, NCAA. Don't don't knock these guys because yeah. let's, let's really look at the picture. Come on, let's do it. The universities are making close to a, a billion dollars a year. And, of course, it gets spread out to all the other sports. But yeah, it does. Come on now. Yeah. Just for a pinch to take care of this, this person who's putting their life on the line. I've seen guys get hit. And almost lose their life off of one hit. One hit, man. Why can't I financially make sure that I'm secure if anything yeah. happens to me? Yeah. You I know, my it. family, there's no, I don't see life insurance policies put out. Man, can you picture, kids. bro? Think send, about that. Sending your son to college with a, a, a scholarship. Yeah. Knowing that they were probably the best at their high school. They get to college and everybody's good. Whew, it, Only for them to realize that, oh, man, I don't measure up. Mm. And now they're left with this college bill. But then let's look at this thing now on the flip side of things. You're the best in high school, and you get to college, and everybody's good, right? But you're a dog, too. And you start getting those phone calls mm. saying, hey, we want you to do a commercial. We want to give you some money here. And now you can secure some things, and you're not looking at that financial situation right. the same way anymore. You could pick up the phone and call mama and say, hey, mama, you can quit your job. Absolutely. I'm in college getting the best education I can, and I can take care of home. Absolutely. And that's the, the tough part. When your family, where you come from, you don't have the means and needs to, yeah. to buy you groceries. And, and I don't think people know how hard it is. They say, they say once you get to college, they think you made it. <laughs> wow. But who's really funny? The, the, the school's taking care of your, your, your housing. You know, you're there for the sport, your school. But who's putting food in your refrigerator? Who's Man. paying your phone bill? That's who's cool. making sure you got regular clothes instead of the yeah. you, the football uniform or the, 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 the sports team uniform? Yeah. You don't probably have that back in the home. Man. That's amazing, yeah. And, and just to have a little bit, and then you hear these guys want to get in and, and uh, uh, put some uh, cap on it and move it around. Why? When you don't put a cap on yeah. what the school makes. Yeah. You know, it was uh, amazing coming up. I wasn't fortunate enough to, to go to college. I didn't yeah. have the, the, the mindset Man, I barely made it through high school, man. 
you know, knowing what I know now, man, I probably kill it at college, man. If yeah. if I would have been mentally able to to understand and digest mm-hmm. a lot what I do now, yeah. then you know, oh. man, me and sports, I was good enough to to play at a very high level. Yeah. You know, I just couldn't match with the academics. So, but I remember seeing my little brother grow up, and he was good. He wasn't as good as I was in sports, but he had a commitment and a dedication. Yeah. You know, shout out to, to Juice, man. They called the kid Juice for a reason. Yeah. I trained him since he was little, man. He used to like Ninja Turtles, right? <laughs> and and I'm like, man, I can't have my little brother yeah. being soft, man. I got Ninja a reputation out here. So, man, Ninja he got into football. I used to have this kid out there tackling trees and everything. Yeah. Now, I hate that I used to have him push him so hard, but I turned him into a machine. Yeah. And, man, he used to rip kids' heads off. He just was an undersized. They had him uh, uh, on the line. Mm. He was undersized cat. He was the size of a linebacker, man. He's probably about six foot. You know, probably about maybe your size or a little bit smaller. Mm-hmm. And he would have been a perfect size for a linebacker, man. But he fit in where he could. Yeah. And he was the best at where he was. He ended up going to college, man. And my mother couldn't afford it, man. Went to a school out in Iowa. And that's what we're talking about. And I just wonder now if he would have went to college now. Without the stress. Without all of that stress. Mm-hmm. And my mother was working at a grocery store, man. She was, you know, the, the clerk. You know, she was a, a manager in the office, man. She couldn't afford to, to pay all of those, you know, tuition. So now yeah. he's stuck with loans. And I just wonder if the, the tables would turn. A lot more kids will succeed or want to succeed. It'll change the, the whole dynamics, man, mm-hmm. of a college experience for a youngster, man. All the it way. Will change. All the way. All the way. Uh, we can go all day man, about that. I love that topic, man. I really <laughs> we, do. We can go all day about that yeah. because there's a lot that that's that's not talked about yes, at all. Yes. But uh, yes. we're gonna move to our special place uh, where we want to get to yeah. the guest of the of the, uh, of the oh, hour. Yes, oh, I'm time, time. I'm ready for this. Shining lights. Wait a minute. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. We got to give this a proper uh, intro. Kev, go get a light. <laughs> All right. You know, I, I get in my Steve Harvey bag. You know, but so look, we have a special guest. Yeah. Man from. Oak Cliff University, from what I was told. Oak Cliff University, from the hood. Grew up. Man, I mean, when I say he tells me certain stories, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I got to tell y'all this story real quick. It's a real quick story. Man, we was at a uh, at a gathering, man, with the church folks, right? We sitting there playing spades, right? And this guy comes up, saying, yeah, I know how to play spades a little bit. And anybody that know me, man, know I'm a spades master. This is what I do. I do this. This man sits down at the spades table and starts talking trash. I'm talking about slapping cards, licking the cards, sticking them on his forehead. I said, wait a minute. I said, I said this can't be real. This yeah. can't be real. But man, this guy here, man, he's a he's a special man to me. And, and when I came here to Texas, I was going through um, a, a real tough season. And, and I was in transition. And I ran from God, man. When mm-hmm. I say I ran from God, I had been running from God for a long, long time. And this man didn't know me from nothing. And I ended up in the back of this church, mm. curled up in a corner, crying my eyes out, lost and confused. And all he did was he came and he gave me a love token and he loved on me and he prayed for me hey. as if he knew me my whole entire life. And he said, don't be a stranger. I'm putting this in your hand as a token of investment Mm -hmm. for you and your family to be a part of our church. Mm. Without further ado, the man of the hour. Yes. To some is Pastor Brent Jones. To some is PBJ. (laughs) To some is Brent. To me, it's my pastor. This is my pastor. pastor. Everybody give it up for Pastor Jones in the building. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Jones. Come on, you can't honored, tell me. You never had one here. here. Yeah, I've never had that kind of introduction before in my life. <laughs> Throw him the rock. He ready yeah, to shoot, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love I'm feeling the VIP vibe. Oh, man, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. You definitely appreciate it, man. Uh, thank you. And, and we are honored pastor. to have you as our first guest on Men's Truth. It's my yes. honor to be here. Man, grateful. I'm Grateful, grateful. You know, so let's dive straight in. Okay. I would love, first of all, to know a little bit about the upbringing of. Okay. P. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I was raised basically by my grandparents. Wow. <laughs> my mom was um, a single mother. And uh, it was interesting. I tell people I was born Hispanic and I lightened up. <laughs> <laughs> because, well, my birth name is Thomas Montanez. Wait a minute. Oh. Yeah, that was my birth name. Tomas Montanez. We welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Yo habla espanol un poquito. <laughs> so, so my mother was living with a guy. Hispanic guy, and then I came out blonde hair, blue eyes. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so my dad was actually a guy that was in the military in the um, Vietnam War. And wow. on, on leave, they yeah. had kind of had a liaison, wow. as wow. you call it back mm -hmm. then. And so, so that kind of relationship ended, and then my mother um, wound it up uh, in a relationship with another woman. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And so my grandparents kind of gave me stability during that time. Mm. And uh, But I did ultimately move in with my mom and her friend. Yeah. <laughs> we say that. Uh, and, uh, you know, until I was about six, then we moved back home to Cleburne. And uh, we lived in the east side of Cleburne. For those of you who don't know anything about Cleburne, there's a railroad track that runs down the middle of it. The east side is predominantly black and Hispanic. Oh, wow. And the west side is, is white, you know. And so uh, she started dating this guy, and he had long hair, bell bottoms, no shoes. <laughs> uh, Wait a minute. A wife beater before you knew what a wife beater was. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, this guy looked like Jesus Christ. Yeah. Wait a you minute. Know, he was not, he did not have the character of Jesus Christ. Let's put it that way. Uh, he, uh, you know, he was a drug dealer, man. There's no way around it. Man. You know, so, uh, but they got married and that was, that was kind of my, that's how I kind of started, you know. But, um, yeah, it was a wild ride. You know, that was man. the 70s. Man. Okay? I'm old. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you know, that's not old, man. It's, 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 it's seasoned. Okay. You know, I was talking about the 70s with somebody, man. I was sharing some Curtis Mayfield and, and some old David Ruffin of the 70s. And I was like, man, this is my music right here. Yeah. You know, and I, we were talking. It was like, man, I wonder what it was like, man, to be in this era. He said, we probably would have been high. <laughs> <laughs> Because it was so accessible. Yeah. Well, BC, I was. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but music is like maybe that's why the disconnect with music. I love music. Yeah, that's probably the disconnect with music, because you know the creativity. It was original. Yeah, you know, and, and it it was therapeutic. Yeah. You know, so I'm sorry, I didn't mean yeah, to interrupt. Marvin Keep Gaye, going. Marvin Oh, man, Gaye, Marvin Gaye, yeah. Al Green. Yeah. Oh, man, I can go on and on and Absolutely. on and Eddie King. We don't have music like that. Man. No. Absolutely yeah. not. So, you know, uh, I think somewhere around eight or nine, my, my grandmother was always in church. Mm. So she would take me. And anytime I my grandfather never went, but if you stayed overnight with them, if it was a Sunday, you went to church with her, wow. even though he never went. And so somewhere around eight or so, my mother started getting back into church. We started attending. And I think at 10, that'd be 1977, I was baptized, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, um, you know, I really just, I just poured my whole self into it. Now, unfortunately, my stepdad, you know, he really pushed on my mom away from it. You know, never really supported it. Kind of was like downed it, you know, thought it was kind of strange. Uh, but uh, I think at 14, at 14, I went to my pastor because I felt the call to preach, you know. Wow. And uh, you know, I'm young, you know. And, yeah, 14, 14. Rightfully wow. so. He yeah. said, hey, you know, read your Bible. Keep praying. <laughs> this thing will develop. Well, about that year, we had a fire. Uh, my uh, my stepdad was growing marijuana on the back porch of this old house. He had all these electrical outlets oh, plugged Lord. in. You know, he's growing his plants, and and so we had a fire. And it was it was just God that I didn't end my life then, because the fire was on the back porch, my room, mm. the bathroom, and the kitchen. I came in that night. Uh, I'd been to a football game, and it was uh, it was hot back there. You know, we had only had AC in the front of the house. Oh wow! You have no AC, <laughs> yeah, no yeah. no central <laughs> units. Okay, uh, I mean it's so hot sometimes we put an ice block in front of the fan. That was oh, our man. AC. That was AC. <laughs> <laughs> so so I came in and I pulled out the trundle bed in my in my sister's room because it was cooler in there, 
And that's where the fire started back there. And we all just got out with the clothes on our back, wow. you know. Wow. And so I was really into church at that time, but because no one could take us all, I wound up moving with a great uncle and aunt, and they, they didn't attend, you know. So I just kind of fell in line with yeah. their family and what they did and kind of got out of church at that at that time. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's something, man. How I was sharing uh, on our last week episode, I remember when God called me when I was about 10 or 11. Mm-hmm. I was baptized, and, mm-hmm. and he said, this is a little preacher, this is a little preacher. Mm-hmm. But at the same exact time God called me, the devil did too. Mm-hmm. It's when I was exposed to porn, when I was exposed to drugs. And, yeah. and a lot of people were like, man, how did you get exposed to all this stuff at a young age? Yeah. yeah. You know? And that was the same time that God was saying, that's my son. Yeah. So the enemy's like, ah, let me try to extract him. But like I was telling people last week, man, he can only delay. Yeah. yeah. That's it. So I, I can appreciate, you know, this part of your story, how the enemy comes in. And we know the outcome of where you are now, mm-hmm. but I couldn't imagine some of the things that you stepped into at that time yeah. and, and some of the things that you found yourself in, some of the rooms yeah. you found yourself in. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. if you care to elaborate maybe even a little bit on that part. Sure. Um, you know, if I if I skip forward a little bit, um, you know, I was the kid that, you know, I wanted to be with the group, you know, but I was the kid at the keg party pouring my beer out and asking for another one. <laughs> You know what I mean? I just, I didn't just rush headlong into it. But what people don't understand is you hang with those kind of people. You hang in those environments and, you know, you start to develop a taste for it. You know, you start actually, you know, but, um, you know, even in high school, you know, I drink a little bit, you know, uh, occasionally, you know, smoke a joint or something, but never. It was only in college. And college was, uh, and even the first two years I was fine, but I was in a, relationship with a girl and uh, uh, she got pregnant and even though I was lost as a goose I mean I was lost as a goose at this time I did not believe in abortion okay I just didn't you know and I begged her don't do it don't do it I'll quit school I'll take care of it you know what I mean but she was much younger than me and uh, she was like ain't no way you know that was long before that was that was in the 80s you know and so um, you know when that when that happened, when we gave that kid up, and, and I just spun me out. I mean, I think there's a f- fire break in people's morality. It's like when you jump over something, everything's open to you after that. Wow. Yeah. That was a bridge too far yeah. for me. I mean, the drinking and all the other stuff, you know, I knew it was wrong. But, you know, when I did that, that opened the way to really deal with, because I would have these terrible nightmares that I was in a courtroom. And... <laughs> This guy that had, like, hacked people to death, a terrible murderer, you know, and people had seen it, eyewitnesses, you know. And, and I'm sitting in the courtroom, and the, and the jury comes out, and they say guilty. And then they turn in my dream and look at me and say, you're no different. Oh, wow. You know, so my dive into drugs was to stop that feeling. Mm. It wasn't really pleasure. It was, I don't want to feel. Yeah. You know, like wow. I'm this kind of person, wow. you know. And uh, so, you know, that really spiraled after that. That was my junior year, you know, and I really just just started pouring myself into drug use, wow. you know. And mm. uh, um, I, I, I kind of reached ahead. I I got out of school. I'd always keep a job, you know what I mean? I wasn't one of these junkies, you know what I mean? Stole stuff and (laughs) always kept a job. Functional. Yeah, Yeah. functional. But, you know, definitely addicted. And um, me and the girl that I was living with, we'd been on about a three-day binge, and I had to go to work. And uh, I was, so I tried to lay down. And if you guys have any background in speed and all that stuff, you know, you can't sleep, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I got frustrated. I went in. My mother uh, used to take an anti-anxiety drug called Elevale. Mm-hmm. And so I took one. I laid down for about 30 minutes. It didn't do anything. I got frustrated. went and just poured some in oh, my hands goodness. and threw them back. Well, when I woke up, the bed was soaking wet. Man. It's like somebody threw a five-gallon bucket of water on me, and I'm having trouble breathing. My heart is just, Man. and so I, uh, I just started praying. <laughs> I just started praying. I said, I, and, and I knew. I, look, when you're in that situation and you're living like that, 
Mm. You have no uh, false pretense about your status with God. Okay? Mm, yeah. I knew that I was in the wrong place. I knew Man. my life did That's not good. reflect yeah. my original faith. And um, I just said, Lord, please forgive me. You know, if you get me out of this, I'll turn my life around. Wow. And I mean, within four or five minutes, my heart began to beat normal. My mm. breath came to me. And I went off, fell asleep, and uh, woke up the next morning. It took me about two weeks to really, really make the decision, okay? I mean, I had made a deal with God, and I came home from work one night. I worked nights, and I came home in the morning, and in the shower, God showed up. He said, I got you out of that jam. Man. I want I want a commitment, you know? And so wow. I just fell in that shower, repented, you know, God renewed me in the Holy Ghost. And uh, it was interesting because I went to sleep and the girl that I was dating came home. She worked during the day. She came home. She sat on the side of the bed. She woke me up. And when I woke up before I said anything, she goes, what's going on? <laughs> like this. I said, well, now that you mention it, yeah. this can't continue. You know what I mean? And, of course, you know, she had friends who went to church and, you know, kind of had one foot in. I said, I can't do that. Yeah. I'm like, I'm either in or I'm out, you know. And, um, you know, that was that was the beginning of, of the turnaround right there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I love that about your story, how you went from chasing mm. something that was internal mm. to living in a place to where you knew God had something to do for you. Mm -hmm. But the enemy came mm -hmm. and ramped your thoughts. Yep. And in the midst of him ramping your thoughts, you started chasing after what you thought can heal that thing. Right. And in the midst of you chasing something that you thought can heal it, you turned it around and almost killed yourself in an overdose mm -hmm. only for God to extract what you thought. Mm -hmm. And to insert really what you needed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, you bring up a good point. Everyone has to come to the end of themselves. Right. Yes. And unfortunately, we are hard-headed, us mm -hmm. men. Yeah. And it takes right. usually something like that. Wow. Some kind of a death of a loved one, you know, uh, end of a relationship. It takes something like that before you. And, and I preached a message, and I think this is true. And the message is God doesn't believe in you. You know what I mean? Because we, we hear all wow. this stuff. Wow. You know, no, he knows you. He don't believe in you. He knows who you yeah. are, okay? But we like to tell ourselves that. And as long as you believe in yourself, you won't put your faith in him. Wow. Wow. I lived that for a long time. <laughs> so here's, here's a question yeah. that some will ask that's not spiritual. After you, you found that God was speaking to you in the shower and you, you repented that day, you changed. A lot of people... Don't change that fast. Did you go through withdrawals? Did you have to go get uh, medical attention? Mm -hmm. Anything in that form to really, like, get yourself weaned off of wanting that itch again, you know? No, I mean, you know, that I, I tell people I can't go to an AA or an NA meeting because yeah. God delivered me. Wow. Because at an NA or an AA meeting, you have to start with, hi, I'm Brent, I'm a, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. And he really just delivered me. I haven't had one desire for cocaine or methamphetamine mm -hmm. since that time. And it was so, I mean, there were, there were steps forward and steps back. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you really, the difficult thing in drugs, I would say, is you've got to change your friends. Mm -hmm. And as far as you know, they are your friends. Yeah. But I had some good help with people help me set boundaries. I was like, look, I want to continue to be your friend. I want to continue to hang. But if you're going to use around me, I, I'm out. Yeah. You know, I'm not strong enough. I'm just telling you, it's not that I'm better. It's not any of that. It's I know me, and if you're using and drinking, I'm not strong enough to be in that environment. Yeah. So, yeah. I think a lot of, uh, especially uh, the youngsters nowadays, uh, the Gen Z's especially, mm -hmm. man. We have a, a huge disconnect between your generation, my generation, mm -hmm. or our generation, you know. and their generation. There's mm -hmm. a huge disconnect yeah. because, to me, I see a person that knew mm -hmm. that I got to get this stuff 
out of here, out of me, and God, I accept what you have and the plan you have for my life. Right. You know, to where somebody like me was like, God, are you sure? <laughs> so you could see the the distance between when, when you was like, man, this is God, I'm out. Yeah. To where me, I'm like... God, are you sure? Yeah. Okay, let me take some baby steps to, you know, the Gen Zs. No way that's God because this makes me feel amazing. So yeah. it seems as if there is a huge disconnect and, and we're trying to find as, uh, um, as, as our generation, you know, as we grow. Yeah. I'll say, for instance, my kids. <clears throat> my kids get to experience something that I never had. Yeah. So mm. I can appreciate me more than they can appreciate me, mm. you know? And I know you can say the same thing. So how do we connect that saying, hey, no, nah, no, nah, that's God. You might want to take heed to it yeah, because they're so offended. Yeah. That Gen Z generation is so offended. Yeah. And, and they're easily offended. Right. How do we connect? I know that's a loaded question. How do we connect that? It's a good question. Um, you know, I think human nature is the same regardless of the generation. Mm. Yeah, there are different cultural influences, but human nature is the same. And all of us have a God-shaped hole in our life. Yeah. And the world tells us how to feel it is women, <laughs> drugs, parties, right. stuff, yeah. money, wow. cars. That they they just send us down the road, and and I can say I I imbibed I believed the lie wholeheartedly that yeah. those things would give me they did not give me fulfillment. Now wow. was there pleasure? Yes. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, there's pleasure in sin for a season. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if you have any moral compass. You're not going to be able to live with the cognitive distance between what I know is right and what I've seen in productive people and, and when you're not living productively. And I would say to, to Gen Z, uh, you know, the culture speaks stronger than it did then. Mm. And it's everywhere. It's in the music. It's in who you idolize. But, uh, you know, and I, I don't think everything is a spiritual slash secular. I don't think there's a fine line between those things, okay? A lot of people want to say, well, you got to pull out of the world. I mean, we can't affect the world if we're out of the world, yeah. you know, if you, want, if, if, if you isolate. I mean, you can isolate in behavior and attitude, but you've got to be able to communicate with people. And, and I would say to Gen Z, you know, the problems are the same. They yeah. just have different labels on them. Yeah, they do. <laughs> okay, and, and now the answer I think that I hear is that you, and I believe in biblical counseling, don't get me wrong, but the answer to everything is, is you know, a psychiatrist. And they can't help you forgive a parent who's abused you. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you're right. That's huge. You're right. Because, and I tell people this, that are outside the covenant of God. They want advice from me, and I say, I will give you advice, but I'm here to tell you that if you've never been forgiven of something, mm. it's hard for you to give that kind of forgiveness yeah. to other people. Yeah, yeah. And you get that in a relationship with yeah. God. Yeah. So life is going to punch you. Family is going to let you down. Friends are going to let yeah. you down. And if you're going to forgive and reconcile, you're going to have to have a resource to draw from, which is what he forgave us of. Yeah, man. So... That goes to the point of Gen Z, right along with uh, elderly men. Mm -hmm. And we're speaking about that part. What's stopping, from your experience of being the head of a church and you're seeing the men come in, what's stopping men as being leaders of going question. into church That's a great or question. keeping them out of church from there? Yeah. And, and it affects both sides because the Gen Zs are not wanting to move forward because they don't see the leadership. Yeah. I think, you know, as far as the elder generation, you know, um, what I try to do and what I try to model, and I think more is caught than taught, yeah. okay? And that is I keep up with the culture. I listen. I want to be relevant to the culture. It's not because I'm imbibing it, but I want to be able to speak to these kids, you know. And I had two girls, you know, yeah. who were big into music. So, you know, and I'm kind of an old head on music, but I kept up with what was popular. I would go on, you know, and listen just to kind of hear what they're hearing. 
you know and you know most of the time i was like that's fine you know there were some songs where i would say hey i don't know if you know what they're saying (laughs) but but uh no on that song okay you know and, and and just but you know the one thing that i did with my kids was i tried to give them as much rope as i could and i think mentors and men have to do that don't try to box them in trust them and then when they broke trust then i'll pull the rope in I like you that. know That's i like like my daughter you know she i think this was her sophomore year she wanted to go to you know dance at school i was like cool you go who are you going with some friends some girls i said awesome i said we don't have a problem with dancing dance is not an issue i said the question is what are you going to do when the cutest guy in the school comes up and wants to slow dance with yeah. you I said, it's not dancing per se. It is you're not equipped Mm -hmm. to be body to body with somebody you're attracted to. (laughs) You know, that's our problem. You know what I mean? We just don't think you're equipped for that all the time. And she goes, well, I would say no. I'm just going with my girl. I said, knock yourself out. Have fun. Now, a lot of people was, oh, my God. (laughs) You know what I mean? But I I wanted my kids to know, uh, you know, to go out there and to realize their faith is vibrant in any environment. It doesn't have to be just in the church house. And I think mentors have to teach this young generation and and tell them what we went through and be real. Because they only see you as an elder now or see me as a pastor. I was a hopelessly addicted drug addict. Yeah. Wow. Without God, I wouldn't be where I am today. And it didn't change overnight, and they're not going to change overnight. And we got to be patient with them and love them. That's good. That's the biggest thing, patience. Yeah. Patience nowadays people don't have. They want instant results. They want instant turnover. Mm-hmm. And then when you don't receive it, you cancel out yeah. quickly. And then there goes the hope. It's just gone away from there. So what would you what would you say, Kev, from your experience as being involved early in your in your calling, that how you're reaching now to uh, I would say more like feet uh, boots on the ground in your environment, men around you that like I came around you um, and I didn't have the guidance. What would you say your experience was keeping men from opening that door? to want to receive from you. Because a lot of times what I'm saying is uh, I can speak to uh, friends or family, and they're like, ah, this is that one guy in that group. He's a spiritual guy. <laughs> so yeah. it's stopping them from opening up and to understand how <laughs> Pastor Jones received it and the calling was there, yeah. you know. But other people don't stop their uh, experiences, addictions, or going yeah. through life like that right. Right. because they don't want to open up that door to it. I like that. That's a good question. Man, I think I am who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and God has, has gifted me, man, to um, to be as vulnerable as I am, but to still be as alpha as I am. And it's not a feminine thing to show emotion or, or to show vulnerability. Right. You know, I, I'm a 100% man. I'm a 100%, you know, who I am. So you said it's not taking nothing so, away from you. So it doesn't it doesn't extract anything from me as a person. Right. To be vulnerable to a person and say, "Hey, look, I went through this. Mm-hmm. I am currently going through this. Mm-hmm. I need more of this." Yeah. Right. So if I know that I need it, I understand the concepts of God that if I be what I need, I'm more likely to receive what I need. Yeah. Yeah, that's and good. And I think I understood that concept. You know, and, and I think so many people, you know, they give out, they give out of themselves something that, you know, that they don't know how to even receive on the back end. Is that is that more of an ego thing from us men? Pride from us men? Man, well, pride is a huge thing for men, bro. Pride is a very huge thing yeah. for men. Um, but but pride is, is something that's been groomed over years, mm-hmm. you know. And I think in your vulnerability, your pride has to give up. Cause you can't be vulnerable and prideful at the same time, yeah. you know. It's it's gonna fight. It's gonna it's gonna have resistance within itself. Yeah. You know. You ever seen a person that I ain't crying? Uh, uh-uh, I ain't crying. Well, what's what's the fight? If you cry, you cry. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good. You know. You want to praise God? Oh no, I ain't gonna praise the Lord. Uh, uh-uh, I don't want to do all that. Yeah. He don't know what I've been through. You'd be surprised. Mm. 
how much God know and mm. how much He's been there. That's good. Mm. <laughs> That's good. That's big, bro. You know, man, um, I love I love this part of your story, Pastor Jones, because it's so many people um, that feel the way I feel about you no. and, and how you give so much of you to others, to others mm. with no expectation of return from them, mm. but your expectation of return is from God. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, God, I'm giving because I know I need more of you. Right. And if I deplete myself mm -hmm. of all that you've given me, I trust you to fill my cup. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't understand that and, and they'll mistreat or misuse. And I think that, that that's another thing when you go into the Bible where it speaks about, you know, don't cast your pearls to swine and, and don't, you know, don't just spread your seeds all over. Because when you tend to, to spread them, you know, you didn't have the understanding of God to be able to be of service to the right people. Right. So that at that moment, that's when people feel frustrated with others. Like, man, I pointed at this person. And that, yeah. was that God's wisdom that you poured into them? Yeah. Or you looking for, you you want to be God of the situation. That's a whole other story, too. Whole judge. Yeah. You know, you want to be, I want to be the planner, <clears throat> the waterer. I want to, now you're God of the situation. Mm -hmm. Right. At what point did, okay, I'm going to plant the seed, and God, I'm trusting that you told me to plant the seed, and you supply the increase to them. Yeah. And I've sat and watched you do that. I've seen in church, man, especially as of late, there has been a lot of people with drug addiction, and, and mm. people are dealing with, with homelessness. And, and I'm sitting back, and I'm watching, and God is, is talking, and he's, he's teaching me through the process right. of how to love on people that can't give you nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't even have the capacity to even give to themselves. And they, they are only in a receiving position. Yeah. Do you love them equally that you can love the person that gives the maximum amount of tithes and offering? And I've sat and watched you do that. Right. It's not what you can give me. I, I guess that wasn't even really a question. That was a, a form of appreciation. <laughs> well, thank you. You know, uh, but yeah. how do you do that? that? That could be the question. How do you just love on people that don't give you nothing? I, I think what I'm trying to do is bend out what I've received from God. Mm. So freely I've received, freely, freely I give. Yeah. Yeah. And I've received so much, so much mercy, <laughs> so much grace, so much blessing, so much patience that I want to give that to people. And, and what I found is I bloomed in that environment where God gave into me when I couldn't give anything back. Wow. I bloomed. And I find that that's the soil that people bloom in. Wow. That they know I love you unconditionally because you're important to God, you're important to me. Whether you ever turn your life around, whether you ever, you know, turn it all and, and become productive for God yeah. is not up to me. Man, that's good. That's all good. I do is sow the seed, water yeah. the seed. He gives the increase. And yeah. so, you know, I want them to feel that, you know, and that's what we are. You know, Paul said, you are epistles known and read of all men. Wow. I'm a living epistle to God. I'm the only Bible some people will read. Yes, sir. And so Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples and that you have love one to another. And that's what I want to give them. That, that's, the, that's the characteristic. It's not knowledge. It's not power. It's not ability. It is love. And Man. that changes people. When people really know that regardless of what I do, whether I turn around or, you know, change, yeah. I'm accepted and I'm loved as I am. Wow. I think that's what God gave me. Man. Because I didn't deserve it and I couldn't earn it. <laughs> that is so good. You know, well, before we we uh we close out, I want you to give a shout out to the family because we, we didn't get that far to give a shout out to, you know, Sister G and the girls. Give yeah. a shout out to, to them and the church family if yeah. you could. Sure. You know, and uh as as we come to a uh, close, man, after you give a shout out, could you minister to some men out there that are on the verge of something, whether if it's heartbreak or, or if it's on coming back to God or if it's mm -hmm. on, you know, running away from God, mm -hmm. if you could, as we close, after okay. you give a shout out, okay. 
speak to the hearts of men at this moment? Sure. Uh, you know, I have a wonderful wife. Her name's G Money. <laughs> G Money. She's a realtor. Mama G. So if you need a house, let us know. I'm yeah. telling you. But work? and I have two wonderful daughters, Riley and Sydney, yes. and they're the they're the they're the princesses. She's yes. the queen, and they're the princesses. And and you know, uh, I love them dearly. And they, you know, I I tell people. What we wanted to do with our kids is give them a start that we didn't have. That's great. And and they're really taking advantage of that. Wow. And so, and, you know, to the Northgate family, we love all of them. Sweet yeah. people. They are kind enough to allow me to be their pastor. Wow. And so I'm very yes. honored. I've been doing it for 22 years. And uh, yes. God's good. God's Amen. good. Amen. Uh, as far as men, I, I want to just say there has to be some resilience in your life if you're going to turn your life around. We all fall. We all fail. We all make mistakes. We blow it. Yes. Be okay with that. There's a difference between failing and being a failure. I don't ever own my failure, okay, as my identity. My identity has been secured by the cross. Wow. At the cross, Jesus said, I would rather die on earth than live in heaven without you. Man. That settles my value. It doesn't matter what I make. It doesn't matter how yeah. popular I am. My value is settled. Most people get their value from what other people think yes. or their own performance, yeah. whether that's academic performance, whether that's sports performance, or whether that's what they, you know, what they do in their career. And, I'm sorry, even the best hitters only get on base about 30% of the time. <laughs> That's true. If you're going to get your identity, your worth from that, then 70% of the time you feel like a failure. Yeah. You know, and so... That's the problem with people is when they're trying to pull themselves up from disaster and problems, they look to people to help them instead of God. Look to God. He's going to love you. Yeah. He's not going to give you a lecture. He's going to he's going to put his arms around you. He's going to put his coat on you. He's going to put a ring on you and shoes on you and he's going to kill the fatted calf Man. when you come home. Let's go. Come home. All right, you need him. He wants a relationship with you. Yes. Sir. He wants a relationship with you. He died so that he could remove the barriers between you and he. So there's nothing in the way except, as you said, pride. Yeah. So drop the pride, drop the ego, and come home because you're going to be loved in a way that's going to make you the that's best good. person you could Absolutely. ever be. You're going to be a better husband if you're a great Christian. You're going to be a better father on, if you have a relationship with God. You're going to be a better employee. You're going to be a better manager or business owner or whatever it is. He's going to make you better. Mm. And the blessings of God. I tell people when you start a relationship with God, don't evaluate how things are going for at least three years. Yeah, I know that's hard because we're it's, we, we <laughs> microwave. You know, we want to go to the drive-through. You know, in three months, it's like I've invested, I've done this, and nothing's changed. It's like a business. And so I tell them, you have got to give it, and then in three years, look, and it's going to surprise you how far you've come, how different your life is, your finances. God is going to turn all that around if you will invest and say, "I'm making a commitment to God for life." Mm. I may go up, I may go down, I may take a few steps back, but I ain't going to quit. Yeah, that That's right the key. That part right there. We have become quitters, I think, as men. That part. And once you start quitting, it becomes easy to quit. Wow. Yeah. God didn't quit on me at the cross. Man. I ain't going to quit on him when mm. it is tough. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I, I, I noticed something, and um, Kev brought it up at the beginning of this episode, is Kev was going through transition, going through a hard time, mm. and you came to him in his hardest moment, mm. and you said, I'm going to lift you up. Mm -hmm. Kev, I came to you in my hardest moment, and you said to me, I'm going to lift you up. So to men out there, what we're saying, man, stop thinking you have to do everything by yourself. Man, that's real. That's it real. takes someone strong enough to lift you up to get you through to the other side. So when we think we got it, when you're relying on, on, on what you're doing, your own strength, um, you rely on other things as your outlet, 
you're, you're, you're not going to your support system. That's always been there. And it's your brothers, the brotherhood. Yeah. And if we open up together, <laughs> we become much stronger, Facts. better leaders Facts. overall. So this is why me and truth means so much to both of us here. Yeah, absolutely. Because look at it. Pastor has a life just like yours. Man. No different. Hmm. And he's put in this position to lift other men up and they are doing the exact same thing. Yeah. Pouring to other people. And I'm going to pour into somebody else. And if we keep that chain going, we break this quitting. That's good. Yeah. That's good. We break this quitting. So I, that meant something to me, yeah. you know, starting out. Yeah. And, and I just want to tell you, Pastor Jones, when I first came to church, he lifted me up. I listened to him and I've been all over. And I'm like, what? <laughs> he is he is like talking directly. I mean, you looked in my direction one day. <laughs> and I said, hey, man, don't be talking to me. I don't even know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it spoke. And he lifted me up there, and he, he brought me one of his helpers. And man. look and look what we're doing now. And, Let's and go. It doesn't matter where you're at. Awesome. Let's go. You know, tap in to a brotherhood that can you can save your life. Yeah. Save your life. So that's yeah. all I just want to tell you, Pastor Joe. Thank you so much oh, for being here. Man, my honor is to see you guys doing well. Yeah. Yes, sir. I mean, I, I tell people, I want my ceiling to be your floor. Man. Right? Because you should. You're starting in a place beyond. You know, you don't have to make the, the mistakes I made. You know, yes. yeah. I mean, I, I don't have a father in my life, you know. So I tell God, for whatever reason, you made it to where I'm, you're my father. So if I need money, that's who I go to. If I'm in trouble, that's who I go to. And I have friends, of course. Thank God for that. But, you know, I think one of the things we have to learn to do is go to our father. Yes. And say, I need your help. I'm yes. overwhelmed. And that's okay. And that's that's a thing I think, you know, that, that men don't do. We don't get honest. Mm. I tell people if they want to be in ministry, you have to be honest with yourself yes, yeah. about what your weaknesses are. And you need to quit fronting. <laughs> you need to quit trying to be hard. <laughs> and you need to just get honest and say, you know, I'm a broken. Yeah. And I come from a background that has problems and difficulties and dysfunction. And I don't want to I don't want to pass that on to my kids. I don't want to pass that on to my church people. Yeah. And so if I can get healthy then, then everybody else can get healthy too, and that's what I tell people. They always come to me and say, "Hey, how do I grow a church?" I say, "You grow and a church will grow." Yeah, it's not what they want to hear. Man, it's not what they want to hear. <laughs> uh, so just keep growing. Yes, sir. Know? Absolutely. Thank yes, you sir. for having me today. Man, thank yes, you, thank man. you, man. Another Bless great you. episode, oh, and, and we really Ooh. appreciate Pastor Jones. Wait a minute, but before we go, we <laughs> want to present <laughs> our very first gift to a, a man that's well-deserving. It's no better person to, to have our first gift given open that thing to up. you. So <laughs> I'm going to hand it to him, and I want him to open it up so the world can see what we got here. All right. Come on, men's truth. Hey! Yeah. Oh, hey. hey. <laughs> Turn it hey. You got you the know, back side on it? Yeah, it's got the back side. Oh, come wait a, on. Wait oh, a minute. Man. Wait a minute. I'm repping this today. <laughs> I'm repping this today. Wait till man. I get out of here. People are going to come up to me and say, where do you get that shirt? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's like, like, hey, like. you got to support like. the podcast yeah. if you yeah, want a shirt, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> no free shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's important to the podcast. Make sure y'all like, y'all share, and most importantly, subscribe. subscribe. And before we get out of here, you got anything to say? I can't follow that up. Huh? I can. What? Man, with my song, man. What you mean, man? Hey, I got a song. It's an amazing song. I think it's so appropriate for this very first episode. It's actually one of uh, my favorite songs, and I want y'all to turn it up, blast this thing when you uh, get off this show. You already on YouTube. Just go right over and, and just click it and, and listen to it. And the name of the song is We Are One by mm. Frankie Beverly and Mays. Yeah. Blast that thing because we are one. Man, God is up to something special. Continue to follow men's truth. A pearl is coming soon. Man, God is the head of what yes. we're doing. And all we're doing is following suit. So with that being said, we thank you, Pastor PBJ Jones. Yes. I'm Kev, and this is... Brick, a.k.a. Chris. Yes, sir, and we are Men's Truth. Men's God Truth. bless y'all, and we see you later. Take care.
Yeah.